Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to a very interesting and awesome discussion tonight. My name is Sherry, and I'm here interviewing my friend, David. And uh, we are connected through our Course in Miracles group, and we are uh, hoping to share some enlightening information to help you return to nature. And tonight's topic is the topic of clocks. And tonight, when David explains, he is going to help you um, kind of return your clocks to match nature's rhythms and teach you a new way of understanding time and keeping time and kind of explain how we've been indoctrinated and trained to measure our time and be in time in a certain way. So um, really quickly, I'll just let you know, like I said, David and I are, are part of a Course in Miracles group. Um, and we both went to our first Course in Miracles retreat in Salt Spring Island, Canada, which is in BC. And I'm here right now. So it's really cool that we're connecting and kind of firing back up those, those nascent energies of our own journey with our teacher and friend, Tina Spaulding, who's trans channel. And uh, she she's the one who brought me into the know on the Course in Miracles. And it's like totally changed my life. So I'm super grateful for that text and for every single person that has become my friend through that group, including David. And I, we just have like the most amazing conversations about life and truth and consciousness expansion, love, forgiveness, peace, like all the good stuff in life. So that's kind of the energy that we share. That's our friendship. Welcome, David. It's so good to have you here. And um, yeah, that was kind of like a little intro. How did that go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. And I just want to let everybody know that if they haven't studied The Course in Miracles yet, that's not a prerequisite to this little discussion we're having here. <laughs> because we're um, most of this discussion is definitely within the illusion of, of you know of the world and time. Um, the Course in Miracles is about helping us get from this illusion that we're in, in which uh, time time is actually artificial. Most people don't realize that, but it's an artificial construct that we're that we seem to be in right now. And, um, so I, I just want to read this miracle principle number 15 that it talks about time. It's in the very first chapter. It says each day, we're going to be talking about days today. <laughs> each day should be devoted to miracles. The purpose of time is to enable you to learn how to use time constructively. It is thus a teaching device and a means to an end. Time will cease when it is no longer useful in facilitating learning. So tonight is about time. <laughs> so I'm teaching you uh, some things that I found are really interesting about time that I've learned. And this is actually just the first of, oh, probably three or maybe even four, uh, or even five or six, I don't know, <laughs> of short, fairly short sessions, because I wanted to break it up uh, not only for the viewers, but for us. And, you know, it's just easier to look at one thing at a time. So this tonight is going to be about clocks. And if we feel like uh, we have time to <laughs> extend it into a discussion about daylight saving time, I'll get into that as well. So I want to start out by um, just telling you about how I became so interested in time. And I'm just uh, observing that I have my big slug, I mean, a snail <laughs> uh -huh. behind me, slowing down time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> different beings have a, a completely different relationship with time. And I know myself to be an immortal spiritual being as, as you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure many of the people watching this will understand that they we are all no matter who you are we're all immortal spiritual beings like um uh what's his name Teilhard de Chardon a French a priest catholic priest uh, he said that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience we're spiritual beings having a human experience <laughs> Yes, little play on words, but so profound. <laughs> Did not get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so as such, beyond time, we're living all kinds of lifetimes all in the same instant. 
and our life is happening just like that. Yeah, I recently I've had the visualization of of the spiral basically, and that time isn't linear. And there's like obviously multiple timelines, but it's also like this kind of a spiral framework. And mm-hmm. I think it's really it's really neat to to imagine that all we have is right now, and that whatever happened <laughs> in the past is gone, and whatever's coming in the future isn't happening yet, and it's just now neither, anyway. Yeah, neither one of them exists <laughs> mm-hmm. in actuality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. And so we're actually, we actually have, uh, well, let me start out by just saying in this lifetime, my mother frequently would say different things about time. Like she would say, time is the thing that keeps everything from happening all at once. And I would have to think about that. How does that work? (laughs) Interesting. There's little little mind benders like that that she would give me. Mm -hmm. And she also, I remember her telling me several times, to God, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. <laughs> so that used to also be a, a way of having me, it was a, a mental exercise to think about time. But <clears throat> if we are looking at lives as linear and, and that I had a past life, one of my past lives that I remember, <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, which is happening right now, I guess, but it's hard for us to think about that. But <clears throat> anyway, in a past life, I was a Swiss Swiss watchmaker mm-hmm. <clears throat> and people would come into my shop and they would want to chit chat about all kinds of things, events that were happening in, in the village where I lived or um, events that were coming up or things that had happened or, but all I was interested in talking about was time. And then um, later on in that uh, memory, uh, I went to the village square and they were having a festival and I saw a juggler at the festival. So Mm -hmm. that then became, you know, I I became obsessed with juggling and couldn't get that out of my mind now. So, and that's a, that's a real rhythmic thing. So it's also about time, time related, but it seemed so magical to me that somebody could could almost bend time and space in this uh, amazing way. And so then uh, that event in that lifetime made me decide to become a juggler in this lifetime. So I was a professional juggler for about 20 years and mostly in Atlanta, Georgia. That's really amazing that you pulled that through from another lifetime and actually did it in this lifetime in a professional way. Yeah, well, we actually, what brings us back to earth is our dreams, our unfulfilled dreams. And so if we can eventually detach ourselves from this dream and and detach ourselves from the attractions of this earth, then we won't have to come back. So that's that's where I think I am. I I, I feel like this is my last <laughs> yes. my last draw, and I'm making the most of it and really enjoying it. And <laughs> I love that. I I feel that way too. That that this this is my last Earth incarnation as a human. But we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we won't know till we know. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so where do you want to start with this? How do you want to? Okay. Let me uh, share my screen. Sure. Here and. Let's start with the clock. Great. Um, this is a, you know, I, I drew this earlier today. This is a typical to- clock. I started to say TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, and <clears throat> of course it starts, well, does it start? It starts right here, but is this midnight or noon? We don't know. Well, it's it's really both. It acts as both, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it could be either one, depending on where you're at in the world and and all that. But um, it actually goes, the hour hand actually goes around twice in a day, right? Yeah. So I put the symbol of the sun as the noon time and this symbol that kind of looks like a, a, moon, a crescent moon, I put that to symbolize midnight. So both the 12 o'clock hour is both representing noon and midnight. But the day is actually supposed to 
uh, start with midnight and then go around once and reach noon and then go around again and reach midnight again. And that's one day, right? So yeah. it's 24 hours divided into a.m. and p.m. <clears throat> well, OK, that's how that's where we're at now. Let's talk about how we got here to this <laughs> point. <laughs> and what is a.m. and p.m.? It used to be that the, the day would start when the sun rose and go till the sun set. And before noon was, was called antimeridium. And after noon was post-meridium. So that's literally what they mean, before noon and after noon. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, so it wasn't talking about the nighttime. That was a completely different thing. What they had for nighttime was watches. And it started out with the first, uh, with three watches during the night. And so, watches, you don't mean watch like you wear on a wrist. You mean like a, like a person, like a century or something. Right, like exactly. Like somebody staying awake and having the responsibility for watching and, you know, making sure no thieves came or no wild animals came or whatnot. And so then you'd get sleepy and you'd wake somebody else up and it would be their turn to have the second watch and so forth. So then at some point, they divided the, the day into 12 hours. Hmm. So it, it started out with the first hour and the second hour all the way to the 12th hour. They still had AM and PM and they still had the, the three watches at night, although later they, they created four watches. I guess it was too long. <laughs> yeah, that is a long time, especially in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, so it changed from being four hours long to being three hours long. Well, and these aren't, these aren't the hours like we have because the sun throughout the year changes depending on where, what your latitude is. Well, the the hour the hours of the day could be longer or shorter. Oh yeah, like up here, we our sun is setting at like nine oh two p.m. Yeah, sunrise is five eighteen a.m. Five eighteen. Sun, wow. Yeah, sunset is nine oh three p.m. Sunrise is five eighteen a.m. So okay. it's quite interesting being here because you know my whole I'm East Coast time person normally, so uh -huh. it's like it's so light outside until it's nine o'clock at night. And then I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I'm this beautiful window I'm sleeping next to. And I'm like, oh, the sun is up. And I grab my phone. I'm like, oh Jesus, it's not even 6 a.m. yet. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. And you could be in an area of the Pacific time zone where the sun isn't straight up at noon. I mean, it's only, there's only one line, one uh, longitude in the line where it's, it's the sun is at its zenith at noon in, within the time zone. Okay. So there's going to be some variation, but the daylight uh, savings time uh, moves that by a whole hour. Mm. Uh, so that's another discussion we'll get into. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't want to take us off track. I know we're trying to keep these like short little bites. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let me see what I have here. Uh, so um, there's now. So now we've uh, gone back. We've gone to this clock where a.m. A is everything from midnight to noon, and then everything from noon to midnight is p.m. And that that that's where we came from here. So now instead of the the twelve hours starting. At, uh, at sunrise. Oh, and I, I just want to say, let me let me show you this. Um, this is the sundial. Mm. So this this shows you how the shadow, which ends up being on the other side, right? The shadow is on the opposite side. So the time moved around the sundial from the it went counterclockwise <laughs> because the shadow would come from this direction, and. Um, Anyway, so that's that's where the 12 hours came from. So now, instead of being like that, now 
it's like this. Mm -hmm. So how far we've come, right? <laughs> I know it's fascinating, but it's like, wow, a lot went into this, the, the mm -hmm. development and the change. Yeah. Okay. So at some point they decided to make the, <clears throat> the time of the day start at midnight so that there were 12 hours from midnight to noon and 12 hour, another 12 hours from noon to midnight. And so that gave us 24 hours. And now a lot of clocks uh, have 24 hours. They still start at the top. So I, I did a different clock here. Uh, the, the normal Zulu time starts with zero up here. At the, uh, I, I, yeah, it starts with zero. I put zero at the bottom for an, a reason I'll explain in a moment. But it starts with zero. It goes one, two, three, four, all the way around to 12 here at the bottom. And then 13 through 24 is uh, back at the top. So uh, the reason I did this the opposite way is because the day starts at midnight. And so if you if you do it the way I uh, did it here, then the sun, the hour hand, which is represented by this arrow here, would always be pointing roughly to where the sun is. So you can actually follow the sun all the way around in a day. From, oh, I see what you mean. Uh -huh. Okay, so wherever the arrow is pointing, that's the hour where the sun is. Like it's like it's tra tracing the sun across the sky, across the the exactly. movement that we think. Really, the sun isn't moving. We are, but how we see it. Exactly. So over here at six o'clock in the morning, on average, that's when the sun is going to rise. Mm -hmm. And then noon will be will be 12 o'clock. And then the sun will set at 18, which is 6 p.m. And you could actually put, put the hours in p.m. over here if you wanted to, if you're more accustomed to thinking in terms of a.m. and p.m. Well, this is familiar for me, military time. We would oh, say right, right. 1,800 okay. hours, 6 o'clock. And you mentioned Zulu time earlier. Whenever I was deployed, all the reports that we did, we had to do it in Zulu time, which was common across all the commands, global. Right. So, yep. <laughs> I guess so I knew more about this than I thought I did. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and did you have any uh, analog clocks like this that had the 24 hours with the hour hand? I, mo everything was basically digital. We just had to know the okay. conversion from local to Zulu. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. What about watches? Your watches were digital as well? or? Yeah, oh, and we had cool watches. I was in an airborne unit, so we had watches that would do like, you know, elevation and speed when you're jumping out of the airplane and stuff like that. So, oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I think some of those watches did have that. I just had the one that was all... Um, digital. But I remember mm -hmm. some very, very complex and cool watches that some of my peers had. So. <laughs> yeah. And so um, what would you do? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and uh, talk about daylight savings time. What would you do with this clock to keep the sun, you know, relatively straight up at noon and yet still be able to tell the time? Because when, da when daylight savings time rolls around, the sun doesn't change its position in the sky. It's the earth is still rotating around its axis in 24 hours. The only thing that changed was the number that we attach to that time when the sun is at straight, you know, at noon or midnight or whatever. So I came up with a, what I think is a clever way to deal with that. And that is just to shift the numbers by one hour. Okay. Yeah. Show, show it down here. Where at uh, at uh, two two o'clock in the morning, this this used to be where the two o'clock position was here, and now it shifts to three o'clock. And so you would still you would still see you could put this type of a clock on the south wall of your home or office or whatnot if you're in the in the northern hemisphere, and put it on your north wall if you're in the southern hemisphere. And it would point relatively close to where the sun is, depending on where you are in the time zone. You could even shift it um, even more so that straight up is at, at noon, is always at, at right at noon. 
so that it really is pointing to wherever the sun is. And then whether it's nighttime or it's a cloudy day or whatever, you would always know, or, or if you're inside, whatever, you would always know where the sun is in the sky. <laughs> I love that. I, I think it's a great idea because it, it actually connects us to nature as opposed to technology and control and all those things. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much it for the clock, my clock idea, other than later on when we get into the moon cycle and uh, things like that, um, I'll add some more ideas to this. But um, I also wanted to show you some other sundials. This wow. is an ancient, uh, I believe this is an ancient Greek sundial and ancient Roman sundial that looks to be showing at about um looks like somewhere around 10 in the 10 o'clock um uh, well what we would consider 10 o'clock minus six hours it would be about the four o'clock hour and so it goes from right to left is that how um like it looks like for me the shadow is well, I kind of see two shadows. So if you could just explain how, like, which direction it moves. It goes from... Oh, can clockwise. You, can you see my cur cursor here? I can, yes. Mm -hmm. So because the sun is... Uh, well, you know what? It depends on which way this is facing. Yeah. Um, but basically, when you look at it, there's no question like where, where that shadow is literally pointing it's, it's inside of an hour piece of pie, right? Yeah. So you know. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know whether this is pointing North or South. Uh, so I don't know if it's oh, right. morning or afternoon. So um, I'd have to get into those, <laughs> those details <laughs> to know, but uh, here's another one that's up on a column. So when did the, when did the change occur? When did when did it stop being like this? And is is it like a long over time change, or was it like all of a sudden we're we're becoming quote unquote modern? Yeah, it it was you know uh, over centuries that it went from this from the AM PM thing and the three watches to uh, to the twelve hours. You know, gradually as people got sundials because it started in ancient Sumeria, went to Egypt and throughout Mesopotamia. And so it's it's not it's not like you can say there was one particular time or year. Okay. When it started it just spread as as the um idea spread. And then at some point the Romans switched it from three watches to four watches. And then also the Romans and I I you, you could look and see what years it was back in the time of, I know that this uh, between the Old Testament and the New Testament was when the Romans uh, switched from three watches to four watches at night. And as to when they changed to the day starting at midnight, um, I'm not real sure, I haven't looked at that, but I would imagine it was around the same time as some of the calendar changes like the Julian calendar Mm -hmm. of in the time of uh, Julius Caesar somewhere around there plus or minus 100 years probably or 200 years that would years. make perfect sense <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and so um then we have the water clocks was a way of keeping track of time at, uh, for instance at night so when they developed these water clocks which probably started in China because they have they have them there. I've never seen this before. Yeah, it, the hole is a certain size so that it takes 12 hours for the water to drain from this uh, container into the into the one below. That is so cool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like a giant egg timer. <laughs> yeah, right. And so there would be lines inside this bowl down here at the bottom where you could tell what time what what relatively what time it was based on how many lines up it was the water was <laughs> that's so neat 
I'd like to get one of those. I bet it would be really relaxing to hear that water throughout the night if you could hear it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and you could do it. Uh, you could do it in the day too. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to, so you could keep it going all day and all night. 